For a long time, attention from girls was the only thing I wanted. It was the whole reason I started going to the gym, because girls like muscles, right? I wanted to look like the popular guys from my gym, the ones that were super strong, very built, seemed to get all the respect from people. You know, the guys who people come up to and ask, how did you get so big? So I figured the best way to achieve what I wanted, which was more attention from girls, was to get like these guys, to get as big as possible. But my problem was, as a gym newbie, I had about five years of catching up before I began to look anywhere near as big as these guys. And to make things worse, all these fitness influencers that I was listening to told me that the key to getting big was to bulk like crazy. But I wasn't comfortable with the idea of getting fat just to get fit. And this whole thing just made me feel very demotivated, like I was never going to see any real progress. But then one day as I was going about my usual brain dead habit of scrolling through Instagram, I stumbled upon a concept that broke my reality. A piece of advice that made me rethink my whole approach to training. That made me realise these big guys who I've been putting on the pedestal were actually going about things in the wrong way. And that when I properly implemented, it started to get me a lot more attention from goals. This is the concept that I'm going to be breaking down for you in today's video so that you can achieve the very same results. So if you find any value in what I'm about to tell you, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. Let's get into it. Most guys have zero clue what girls actually like in terms of physique. For instance, it's pretty much a fact that women love the lean athletic build. So how come guys are chasing the standard set by chunky steroid head bodybuilders? Don't let fucking cancerous Instagram fitness culture fall you into thinking that's what girls like because they don't. Believing that is the mistake that I made in the beginning. All the guys in my gym wanted to look like David Laid because obviously he's very big. He receives a lot of praise and attention for his physique. So people naturally think if they get as big as him, then the same compliments and validation is just going to come flooding in. And in a sense, they're right. They probably will receive more compliments, just not from girls. By trying to get as big as possible, you have optimized your looks for the male gaze. You look good to another guy, not to the majority of girls. Which is totally fine if respect from guys is the main thing you're after, or you don't mind guys checking out your body. But you have to know, girls don't like the meathead look. Instead, you need to train the female gaze in mind. Nine out of 10 girls will prefer the leaner athletic look where there's still some muscle, but they're maintaining a lower body fat percentage. And that's instead of bodybuilders and powerlifters, they either have a high body fat percentage or freaky exaggerated proportions. Basically, they always pick the Ronaldo body type over the Chris Bumstead look. And that's because girls like muscles, but only up to a certain point. And this is the concept that honestly turned things around for me. The objective shouldn't be to get as big as possible as quickly as possible, which often comes at the cost of your health, but to slowly build a lean athletic physique. Along with the realisation that girls actually have an ideal body type for men, I also learned that there are particular muscles that girls prefer to look good on a guy. So by prioritising the training of these muscles or wearing items of clothing that show these off nicely, you're optimising your looks for the female gaze rather than the male gaze. So some of these will be based off the popular consensus in the Looks Max community, and some of them will be based off my own personal experiences with girls. Here are the muscle groups that girls can't resist. Shoulders, back, and upper chest. I call this the Roman combination, because when you have all these muscles on point, it's like you're wearing a chest plate of armor, like a Roman warrior. And beyond that, the reason I included all these muscles together is because they are the main contributors to the V-taper physique. If you haven't heard of the V-taper, it's like the perfectly proportioned physique. You've got a wide shoulders and back which kind of tapers down into a narrow midsection, basically the shape of a Dorito. All of the muscles are perfectly balanced and working together, they complement each other and it drives girls crazy. Girls always pick the V-taper and it goes way deeper than you think. I can actually get a bit scientific about this. Having a V-taper is an evolutionary indicator that a guy is strong and healthy that he can provide for a woman, protect her and increase her odds of survival. You literally have science and evolutionary psychology working for you when you have a V-taper. The V-taper is all about building up width in the shoulders and back through exercises like pull-ups and lateral raises. And it literally makes you look good in any clothes, especially tight-fitting shirts or ones that leave the shoulders exposed. Why do you think I always wear tank tops in my videos? It's because I've got good shoulder and back development. Now the chest doesn't necessarily add width to the physique or enhance the V-taper, 
but I've always felt it complements a good set of shoulders, particularly the upper chest. I think in general people are doing way too many chest exercises and the problem with that is they all target the lower chest and that disproportionately grows the lower chest bigger than the upper chest when that's the most aesthetic and visible part of the muscle. Now I don't want to look like I have tits so the part that you should be training equally if not more is the upper chest and you can do that through exercises like the incline dumbbell press, lower abs, Wait, Tom, the lower abs, why not just the whole abs? That's a good question. Well, if you're training correctly, performing the exercises with good form and doing lots of compound movements like the squat and the deadlift, most guys should already have pretty well developed middle and upper abs. But the area where all these delusional eat big to get big power lifters are always lacking is in the lower abs because this can only be trained through specific movements. Ignoring this muscle is a big mistake because the most aesthetic part of the abs is the V-line for the lower abs meet the obliques along the waist. Again, it's always about that V when it comes to looking good. As I said, you need to do specific exercises to target the lower abs. Just treat them like any other muscle, train them a couple of times a week. None of these bullshit ab circuits or side planks, just standard exercises progressively overloaded. Things like hanging knee raises or leg raises, reverse crunches, just performed with more sets and weight over time. And obviously for your abs to be visible in the first place, you need to keep a low enough body fat. Something to keep in mind is that whilst of course girls love abs and if you were to ask a girl what her favorite muscle is she would probably say abs or a different muscle that I'll be discussing later on is that abs tend to favor places with better weather conditions where you can walk around with your shirt off for more of the year in the UK it's way too cold for guys to be walking around without their shirt off so what they'll do is intentionally cut for the summer period for the beach days and when they can go overseas but for the rest of the year, your abs are not going to be super visible under all the layers of clothing. So what I'm saying is, whilst we should be setting our sights on having a good set of abs, for most of the year we can get away with not having them super lean as long as we have a flat stomach. Because when asked to pick between different male body types, girls are often evenly divided between guys with super cut abs or guys with just a flat stomach. So really we can get away with either of those. But girls rarely pick the body type with a flabby beer belly that's visible even through clothes. So just keep that in mind. So if you're still watching, make sure you're focused because I'm about to reveal the muscle that is universally adored by girls. It doesn't matter where in the world you go, women are always going to love this particular muscle and that is the arms. Oh, big surprise. Arms are consistently rated the most attractive muscle on a guy. And it makes sense because they've always been the first muscle people think of as a measure of strength. And it goes a long way to making a girl feel safe and protected. I'm not gonna give you the conventional advice when it comes to training arms because a lot of that advice has been influenced by bodybuilding which we've already established is male gaze optimized. Bodybuilders will tell you to focus the most on the triceps because it makes up two thirds of the arm. That's the advice I followed for two years and I ended up with uneven arms. Sure, my triceps got bigger, but I realized when people are standing in front of you, it's not the triceps they're gonna notice, it's the bicep. So out of those two, I think the bicep is the more aesthetic part of the arm and the thing that you should be focusing on more. Like train both obviously, but I'd suggest adding in a few extra sets a week of bicep curls to make sure they're really popping. But again, I have another controversial opinion about arm training that probably won't go down very well in bodybuilding circles. But we don't give a f about them. We want to know what women think. And that's that girls love forearms, maybe even more so than biceps and triceps. Now it takes a lot for me to admit this because I'm lacking in the forearm department. Like the rest of my arm is okay, but I've got these fucking slender man wrists. I'm a fucking wrist cell bro. When girls look at forearms, they see a guy who's good with practical things. Traditionally manly things, like chopping wood or fixing cars. It makes you look like a problem solver that she can turn to for help when things go wrong. In any t-shirt, forearms will be the thing that girls notice first, especially baggier shirts. You know those videos where it shows the guy with uh, the sleeper build, where he looks really skinny whilst wearing clothes, but underneath he's actually ripped. Those guys always have skinny ass forearms, whereas when a guy has big forearms, girls automatically assume the rest of him is big. The forearm is one of those muscles that takes a long time to train because we use it a lot. But the way I'm building up my forearms at the moment is by prioritizing exercises that use a lot of grip strength 
like deadlifts, hammer curls, and farmer carries. So let me be clear, this is not an excuse not to train the muscles that you didn't see in this video. Don't be a fucking Humpty Dumpty looking bitch with a massive torso but skinny legs. The most aesthetic physiques are the ones that are balanced, proportional, where no muscle group gets ignored. But adding a few extra sets a week to these particular muscles will help optimize your looks for the female gaze so you can start attracting more girls more often. But let me know in the comments if you agreed with my selections for the muscles. Maybe in your experience, girls complimented you on totally different muscles. And remember, looks max doesn't just stop at your physique. It also goes for things like your hairstyle, your sense of dress, your posture. All of these and more will help you attract girls. But that's all from me. Stay sharp, stay ahead. I'm out.